What's happening everybody? Trey here, joined as always by my dad Sean and today reactions to the classics. We got a review of Arcade Fire and their very acclaimed record, The Suburbs. This comes courtesy of suggestion from our longtime patron and supporter and friend of the channel, Mr. Tom W. I'll, uh, I'll save your last we'll, we'll name, Tom. We'll remain incognito. <laughs> Thank you as always, Tom. We uh, reviewed Funeral for Tom a yes, couple months did. ago. It was a fantastic album. Really loved talking and uh, delving into that. You can check that out after this. And, uh, you know, this record did not disappoint either. So uh, going to okay. be looking forward to going in and talking about this one. Before we get into the quick facts and track-by-track -track review, if you like this review, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. That helps us out in the old YouTube algorithm. And you can also hit that big red subscribe button down below below that uh, we upload every single day in a variety of genres. Sometimes multiple times. That's right. Uh, there's something for everybody. There here. is. And also check out our live streams every Friday night at six o'clock on Twitch, uh, six o'clock central time on Twitch. The link will be below. We also do live streams all mm -hmm. throughout the week at different times. That's when we feel like getting on there, Trey, and that's right. uh, talking about something or listening to an album or whatever. We're uh, that's where we are and if mm -hmm. you want to support us on patreon like tom did you want to do an album review song review anything uh check out our link below the patrons make this thing work that's right and uh, all that to say man let's get into the quick facts of the suburbs well we did funeral tray there was a ton of quick facts not nearly as much <laughs> this time but third studio album released in august of 2010 this one had great uh, success chart wise mm -hmm. initially went to number one in the u.s the UK, Canada, and Ireland. And mm. on that note, it also won several awards. Album of the Year at the 2011 Grammy Awards. Best International Album at the 2011 Brit Awards. Album of the Year at the 2011 Juno Awards. And the 2011 Polaris Music Prize for the Best Canadian Album. And there's a theme to this album, Trey, just like on mm -hmm. Funeral. It's the suburbs. So the lyrical content is based on Wynn and William Butler growing up in the Woodlands, Texas, a suburb of Houston. That's right. We reside in a suburb of Dallas, so it's something we can relate to. Oh, for sure. Yeah, the, the Texas boys over here. Yeah, know. exactly. Now, Wynn said it's neither a love letter nor an indictment mm -hmm. to the suburbs. It's just a letter from the suburbs. Yeah, an objective, just a objective, kind of... Objective, and you see it as... The, observations. As, this, as the story unfolds in this... It's a 16-song mammoth. This is a mm -hmm. very long album, a lot of material here. Uh, it was recorded, a lot of it, in Wynn and Regine's apartment and then mm -hmm. also a little bit in quebec and at new york city so kind of all over the place on where this yeah. thing was recorded and this had so much critical acclaim you already mentioned some of the awards that it was winning yeah. uh it has a, an 87 on metacritic which is you know one of the highest of uh, the decade of the 2010s it also has eight different covers that um all have like you know different pictures yeah. of a, a car in front of a suburban home and uh that uh I guess that about wraps it about up. About wraps it up. I will say Wynn had a little comment on the sound of this. He said it was like a cross mm -hmm. between Depeche Mode and Neil Young. So yeah. I that, was a, that was an interesting comment. Wynn sings lead vocal on 13 of the 16. We'll tell you the ones that he doesn't. We start off with the title track, The Suburbs. And The Suburbs, along with Month of May, was a single. Went to 94 in the Canadian Hot 100. And on the theme of the suburbs, it exposes some of the darkness and hidden fears in a seemingly ideal childhood. It introduces some of the album's themes, including war, youth, and loss of innocence. He's remembering good times while realizing he can't go back to them as they're fading, and you can't get back to that nostalgia. Nice arrangement, keys and drums, sets the mood. Mm -hmm. Great story, and really sets the, the mood for the whole album of, look, we oh, look yeah. back at the nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I, we, I look back on my childhood, you know, which wasn't always fantastic in mm -hmm. the environment I grew up in, but I have all these good memories. Yeah. But you can't go back there, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really what struck out to me on this song is that this really, I was thinking if this is going to set the theme, then we're in for a great record. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I'm kind of at that point. I'm t almost 25, you know. I don't know what a, you know, when was a little older when he wrote this, I think. Um, but it's still in that same area. Yeah, both, you know, growing up in the suburbs of Texas are a, uh, our whole life so it, it kind of did hit True. close to home and yeah just the fact that uh, you gotta kind of move past those rose tinted glasses in a certain sense and uh, recognize okay this is kind of what life has uh, has to offer in a sense and uh, you know th that refrain that is in the this song you know comes into play later on in the record as well sometimes I can't believe it I'm moving past this feeling and you know musically I thought it was a nice up-tempo mm -hmm. rocker 
great mix as Arcade Fire always does of having their own type of unique sound, have the strings in there, the keys made for a hazy dreamlike quality to the yep. track, which great atmosphere. Uh, you know, appears a lot in this record. So I thought it was a fantastic way to start us off on this record, both musically and uh, you know, with its themes. Yeah, and I think the second song could have been the first mm -hmm. song because of the title. It's great. Ready to start. <laughs> it was also released as a single. This one encourages you to open your mind, step out into the dark, and be ready to start living out the passions of your life. And in that, the theme of it, I think, basically mm -hmm. is, you know, you work for the man all mm -hmm. your life, and it kind of suppresses you, right? You do yeah. what they want. You and, and in that, the longer you do that, the more sometimes those dreams you had mm -hmm. in your childhood start to fade away as you just get into this mundane life sometimes. So I think he's saying push back against yeah. a more driving song than yeah, the opener. I, I like the line, I would rather be alone than to pretend to feel all right. That was yeah, one that, that was great, man. stood out to me. Uh, you know, kind of diving into this one, I could see a, a couple different interpretations some fans had. Some thought, you know, it could just be read straight up as a breakup. Others thought that, you know, because it mentions drifting away from a specific scene yes. and friends and having, you know, kind of the man over you that maybe now that Arcade Fire at this point is really uh, kind of driving into the mainstream music world a little bit for sure you know how it is whenever you're you're an indie you get a little bit of a hipster you everybody know, you're loves cool. you man look at this man you're going against the grain you're out there on your own then you get some success and then those same people start to be like oh, what's arcade what's win and company doing yeah, here man? Turn on so, you, man in a hurry uh who, who knows I, I like that it can be you know i either way kind of on your interpretation a bit tough to follow up the suburbs but uh, i think this song did as good a job as you could and yeah i thought sense. it was pretty good next up is modern man a mm -hmm. little bit on the themes of the last and the fact I think it's about he's kind of singing about you don't want to fall in the trappings of modern society's mm -hmm. definitions of success because you know what is their definition of success money and power right you chase right. that money and power but everyone I've ever known who had a ton of money or a ton of power or usually both yeah. uh, are not happy or ever <laughs> yeah. satisfied so I think he's talking about that the chorus on this one really sticks mm -hmm. in your head more low-key than uh, ready to start the previous track. No, yeah, I don't have too much of that. That was a good uh, good summary of it, Dad, and I, I enjoyed the fact, the progression of the tune. You know, he's going with the flow at the start as a modern man kind of yeah. waiting in line, but then towards the end of the track, he notes, man, I want to erase, you know, the number of the modern man, want to break uh, the mirror of the modern man down, and I, I think we all have that, uh, that's, you know, kind of desire to find that purpose in life, and uh, again, sure. uh, you know, Wynn's able to kind of cut to the heart of that here on this tune. Yeah, and we're going to move on to the next one, Rococo. Mm -hmm. uh, Wynn and Regine actually share vocals on this one. This one's also a look at conformism in today's youth. Rococo is a style of art that was popular in France during the 18th century. It's sometimes criticized for being an era when French citizens were rich enough to spend large amounts on art without having much taste or culture. And I like the theme of this because it's basically when you apply that mm -hmm. to today's world that people go around using big words or <laughs> right. catchphrase words like Rococo for this <laughs> art thing that apparently wasn't very good. I didn't go research and yeah. look at the art, not that I'm an art guy, uh, but how today's youth go around and basically jump on the trends, and it's way mm -hmm. worse with social media, right? They jump on the trends without actually yeah. really appreciating stuff or liking stuff. We've seen this in many musical artists. Oh, yes. that will remain nameless, but who get... <laughs> push to the stratosphere and don't have a super amount of talent mm -hmm. to put it kindly no yeah and i, I enjoy the fact that wind just cuts through the bs here and i think deep down uh, all of us we like to be a little bit more sophisticated than we are, and you know, sure. sometimes that comes across. In uh, certain circles, sometimes it, we try to make it sound. No, exactly. But then he also notes the the fact that a lot of us don't think of. You know, we all want to think that our music or our art or movies or TV are going to last forever. But at the end of the day, all that gets burned down, and then new stuff pops up in its Always, place. Man. It's just a cycle. You know, you can't think that uh, what what you're listening to will be listened to in a you know a hundred or two hundred or a thousand years from now it's just a except for the beatles right? yeah yeah <laughs> all right let's make it sure man i want you to get too crazy on me. but uh but yeah man i uh i, I kind of enjoyed the, the message to this one and man that that chorus was very catchy the chorus was really Ooh. catchy you know i didn't care for this one a ton mm. i like the I, I like the message of it yeah I but the musically it was... musically 
it was all right for me. That moves us to Empty Room, one of the three songs that Regine sings lead vocals on. And for me, this one was just okay. What'd you think of it, Trey? Yeah, I was yearning for some Regine vocals here, and I'm uh, glad well, we got it. Well, I'm glad we got it on this track. I thought this was a very good track for me. She even throws some French in at she the does. end. She does. That was pretty cool. Um, again, enjoy the the message of uh, you know she knows when she's alone she can be herself. I think that's true with a lot of people. You know, they they don't fully uh, you know put down the mask so to speak. Yeah. But whenever you're alone, you know you. Can just be yourself do whatever you want essentially and it, you know that had a bit of a, a, a that nice up-tempo frantic going in pace that uh, I think that the the vibe of the track well man so I, I dug it I agree I agree that it uh, it fit her voice mm -hmm. nicely um, that's gonna move us to the sixth track city with no children this was also a single and in this I didn't realize this until we got to this song I realized it in the last album mm -hmm. I didn't realize it until I got to the research on this song but when and William not only grew up in the woodlands north of Houston I don't know which direction it is yeah. by Houston uh, but they also grew up as Mormons mm. yeah see I didn't know that either so it, it brought a little bit of there's some religious stuff that pops into their songs mm -hmm. every once in a while and kind of a undertone thing but it made me understand them much better so city with no children is used as a metaphor for a city with its life sucked out of it wind muses on images of childhood and details their destruction through war a failing engine or simply forgetting who we once were therein lies a tragedy of the transition from childhood to adulthood explored on this album a complete transformation of character where the child within us dies and we learn to accept the harsh realities mm -hmm. of life trey that it's going to be hard times, man. I think a yeah. lot of life is just figuring out how to uh, deal with the difficulties mm -hmm. rather than relish the great times sometimes. That kind of sets your path in life yeah. on how you deal with those things. But I thought this was a great track. Oh, definitely single worthy for sure. Yeah. One of my favorite lines in here is about how you can't trust a millionaire who's quoting the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was fantastic. Cheeky and, I, and clever. Yeah, and I thought that really went back to the way they mm -hmm. grew up for sure. And uh, yeah, I, I just uh, like the fact that we all kind of can sometimes look back on our childhood and yearn for that but recognize uh, just as he does in the song he goes back but then the the engine is failing and you know you gotta recognize that hey life's not like it was back then at a certain point you just have to move on with it uh, essentially yeah you lose your innocence mm -hmm. you lose your rose colored glasses you can never put them back on and that does suck sometimes yeah. <laughs> and it sucks as a parent when you see it happen to your child so uh, i could look at this one from two different mm -hmm. points we're to half light one lead vocals by Regine and Wynn. This tracks slower paced ballad accompanied by soft vocals, gorgeous strings that help bring to life the imagery of running through suburbia at night. So like I said, stripped back, nice atmosphere. And this kind of forms the centerpiece of the album along with later on Half Light mm -hmm. too, of just kind of going through and, and looking at the suburbs in a different light as now, you get older. As, as a night owl, I appreciated the imagery here of yeah. uh, how you're more free actually at night when yes. uh, the half light kind of comes For in. Sure. Uh, again, Regine's vocals uh, lended well to the lyrical content. And this one, you already mentioned, Ed, the strings coming in uh, very beautifully towards the end of the, the track as uh, you know Regine's just uh, crying out uh, her outro lines here. So I, I enjoyed it and again, Obviously, fit well with the uh, with the the themes of kind of just wanting to be yourself and uh, be free, even when the world tells you don't do this or do that yeah. type of deal. And then that go, takes us to half light to no celebration. celebration, right? This one continues the theme of transition from youth to adulthood while continuing the ideas of its predecessor. This one's louder and more grand in scale as it explores the pains of moving from one childhood home. Yeah, I think both parts are summed up in the lines, though we knew this day would come, still it took us by surprise. In this town where I was born, I now see through a dead man's eyes. So again, I thought that, again, it uh, played well off of, you know, Regine starting with part right. one, going into Wynn's portion, even notes how, like, something that was once beautiful, like San Francisco, has been overturned by uh, just capitalism and money and this <laughs> and that. Sure. Um, so I, I thought it had, again, a lot of interesting and unique things to say. I, I did like uh, the little one-two punch here, and uh, we, of course, have that later on in the record with Sprawl, uh, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, now, my question is, I like this one better than, than one. Which one did you like better? 
Man, that's a tough one. I actually, I, I think I'm gonna, just for that string arrangement and uh, Regine's, I thought, expert vocals at the end, I'm gonna lean towards the first part. But I understand that I, too because I don't think you can go wrong. It's a wrong. tough question. Yeah, I just hit you with it. Let us know in the comments. You know, yeah, which one you like better. I like them both, but I like this one a ton. Next up, Suburban War. This formed the basis for one of their, for their film scenes mm -hmm. from the suburbs. It's about when or somebody else in Arcade Fire's old friend, Winter. Mm -hmm who becomes strangely distant from the rest of the group. It's how their friendship has changed and how things such as different preferences in music can change lives. The power of music. Much more chill, Trey. Mm -hmm. Nice guitar throughout that's really good. And you know, I, I like the message of the song because preference in music can absolutely divide people as you that's grow true, up man. with people, you know? And like, if I grow up and I'm going on this path and someone else starts mm -hmm. to love country music, nothing against people <laughs> who love country music, but I'm really not over here on this path, I'm over here. And you know, especially as you're growing up, mm -hmm. your music and what you follow there kind of shapes a lot of, sometimes the way you dress. Yeah, your, so, your sometimes scenes, the way who you, you hang think. out yeah, with, so, what you watch, do. Yeah, so we can definitely separate you. And that's the most drastic way I can think of is someone who's mm -hmm. country over here and rock over here we're just going to start to look at things differently as crazy as that sounds sometimes no yeah and i enjoyed uh the fact it lifted some lines from the suburbs title yes. track again showing the themes and the connections uh all throughout this record I, I do like how arcade fire does that with their you know concept albums here and yeah i i just like the fact that it notes you can either stay in the suburbs or rebel against it um but uh at the end of the day you know a lot of times people are just in your life for a season of yeah, time and uh stuff kind of drifts you apart no, for the known po fault of anybody it's just you know kind of how life goes and rolls on so i uh, i dug this one thought the drawing was a uh, very solid as well in the intro yeah and that's going to take us to month of may so it's the 10th track you remember on the on the title track the first track suburbs i said these were released together as mm -hmm. a single and, and made the hot 100 in canada by the time this album came out, they had obviously achieved some success, and mm -hmm. it's kind of been likened to where their first two albums, Funeral and Neon Bible, could be played in church. This was meant to be played in a stadium. Mm -hmm. You know, now they're hanging out with Bruce Springsteen. It's kind of what you talked about earlier, the indie scene versus becoming commercially yeah. successful. Not that they were over-commercially successful. I mean, they still didn't sell a ton of albums by this point, mm -hmm. but, you know, they, they achieved success in what... The, the 2000 success of music yeah. is. It's a lot different. You're not going to become mega famous unless you're a few artists. So uh, in that, this is a stadium rocker. It's the hardest driving mm -hmm. of any, a bit song, punky even. any song from the two albums. And So I wasn't a huge fan of it. I like it okay, but mm -hmm. it, it was a different sound for them. I know that's what they were going for, but Wynn actually had a few comments about this. Yeah, well, he noted that, uh, you know, in the Montreal area that sometimes in May, it's this weird kind of weather conglomeration where it could be, you know, he noted one time it was like 95 degrees and then there was a hailstorm. Yeah. The winds go crazy, knock out power lines. So he wanted to take that type of a weather energy and almost like inject it into the music here. And uh, I think that's why you got a more hard, hard driving, punky type I of agree. atmosphere here. Uh, even though I'm a big fan of punk music, this was not a favorite for me okay. on this record either. I was wondering uh, what either. you think. But, okay. uh, you know, I, I respect the fact well, kudos that... Kudos for trying it. We, we did a, something a little bit different uh, here, but um, then that takes us to our next track. Wasted Hours, or the reminiscing on adolescence... An hour spent doing, quote, nothing way more chilled, obviously, than month of May. Not bad for me. Kind of so-so. That's the point sometimes of adolescence, mm -hmm. right? Hours doing nothing. Because let me tell you something. If you're still in your adolescence and young, when you get older, you're going to relish the times where you didn't have all the responsibilities. Yeah, I enjoyed the technique where he noted the, the children are looking out, staring out the bus window, wanting to grow up. And then he notes that here he is today as an adult looking out his window, wishing he could have go you know, back and have that life, time you know, and not be beat down just by adulthood, essentially. So, again, it's a concept, I think, that is quite relatable to everybody. The fact that we all look back at our childhood and think, oh, man, that was so awesome. Yet, at, at the time, a lot of it, you're just wasting time watching TV, yeah, exactly. walking around outside, riding your bike with your buddies, uh, thinking, oh, man, I wish I could do this or that. But uh, at the end of the day, man, it, uh, it's some, sometimes your wasted time is your most fun memories. It, it usually is. That's going to take us to track 12, Deep Blue. When 
actually said about the songwriting process for this. A song like Deep Blue, we tried many different ways. We finished it as this total synth song and it kind of left us cold. Me and my brother were playing around with some stuff at home when we found this balance between this almost demo quality and the synth stuff. Basically, Trey, it's about technology taking mm -hmm. over. It's so-so for me, but I do like the lyricism on this just like I did in the last song. I, I think I liked it a little more than you. I like the, the differentiation with the slick sense coming in there, uh, adding something different to this record, musically at least. And Deep Blue was a, the first computer to beat a human world chess champion. So yeah. I, I enjoyed the fact that he kind of gave a nod to that. And he kind of urges Windows at the end, put down the cell phone and laptop because there's something wild outside. Yet he also knows Knows the wild in him is also leaving a little bit due to this technological yeah. world uh so it's something that's definitely relatable uh in 2020 you know even say, more so than 2010 here yeah i was gonna say pretty forthright thinking in 2010 for sure that's gonna take us to we used to wait which is actually the first single in the mm -hmm. uk rolling stone actually named this the fifth best song of 2010 like the rest of the album was mixed through vintage analog consoles in montreal and new york by craig sylvie an interview sylvie said the challenge with We Used to Wait, he states that the massive number of individual tracks on the pre-mix recording, there were over 30, and elements like the use of three drum kits was particularly challenging to mix because of the complexity. And on that note, Trey, it builds a great mm -hmm. atmosphere. For me, I liked it a lot more than I liked the three previous yeah. songs. I thought it was really good. Yeah, it had that incessant piano, which yes. uh, just helped drive the track. And again, the theme of the letters in there, how something so small could have brought so much joy to life. Exactly. Uh, you know, just trading it uh, with his, uh, you know, with his love interest in there. Um, yeah, Wynn said that that in high school he had a, a love. You know, a romance with a girl who was letter writing back and yeah. forth. And obviously, no one does that and now, but the excitement of going Every day, out, waiting for the mail, mail like, oh, oh, it didn't come or it did, yeah, and that joy. And now it's like we check our phone every five seconds yeah, wondering a... why they haven't replied. <laughs> there is That is a loss of mm. innocence as well. or, or you know, Oh, like definitely. A, a, just a cool thing that's that's gone now. No, and, and I, again, I thought he, he was able to really convey his, his passion and uh, say what he meant through his uh, vocals in this one. So I enjoyed it, man. And now we're going to go to another two-parter here. Yeah. Uh, we got Sprawl Part 1. Which sprawls is another word to describe the suburbs, usually used urban sprawl, suburban sprawl. Wikipedia actually said, says it describes the expansion of human populations away from central urban areas into low-density, monofunctional, and usually car-dependent communities. I mean, in parentheses, this song is Sprawl 1, Flatland, in parentheses. And it describes, obviously, Wynn and William growing up... Uh, Mm -hmm. in the suburbs and yeah that is the definition in other words, we're not in the city we can't walk to the store yeah we're going anywhere we're freaking getting in a car to get there yeah and this had a definite slower arrangement Definitely again i enjoyed uh, the strings that were in here and you had a bit of a flashback at the end where he's riding on his bicycle a cop stops him asks him uh you know where does he live and uh then it almost flashes forward to the present where he's still trying to find the answer to that question so i thought it was somewhat haunting mm -hmm. the atmosphere of it as well oh definitely and then that takes us to part two where now we get uh regine on her final lead vocal performance here this was a bit more danceable with the synths pulsing and uh, i think had a thematic statement in the line these days my life i feel it has no purpose but late at night the feelings swim to the surface again an interesting um, motif of where and we had this in half light as well where uh, the light is almost restricting where but the darkness is where the freedom is represented where you can kind of be yourself um so again i thought uh, this played off well with the uh, winds opener yeah and it talks about in there you know like if she's creative and if you're creative mm -hmm. you know you, you're supposed to punch a clock and do your job and if you don't and you're creative and you want to do something else you're almost seen as threatening because yeah. you don't conform you don't to conform to what society wants you to be like you know this is primarily also inspired by the 2003 tracy kidder book Mountains Beyond Mountains, which is the parentheses next to the Sprawl 2. I like this one, too. I think, Trey, this, you mentioned the sense. Mm. This could have been popped onto like a 1985 pop album yeah. by random group. I, I guess it, there, there's it a Depeche fit. Mode. Yeah, you know, I influence. guess so, because it would have definitely fit there. And now we're going to close this thing off. That's right. We go to the suburbs, continued, continued. and uh, we have a line in here that I think just sums up kind of the record as a whole. If I could have it back all the time that we wasted, I'd 
only wasted again and uh, it ends with the chorus of the suburbs you know our opening track so again a bookend of the record which is always a nice technique to kind of tie up a concept record yeah i agree i think it's a great way to uh to close out the mm -hmm. album track 16 songs a little hard to pick the favorite tracks. What do you got? I got the, the Suburbs. I got Half Light 1 and 2. We Used to Wait and Sprawl 2. Those are mine. Those are actually mine as well. I think the standouts mm. were <laughs> were pretty obvious yeah. on here. Uh, now we go to the overall score. Really loved Funeral. I think I gave it a 925. Does that sound right? Some, somewhere in there. I know Should've it was went in back and looked, guys. I know we <laughs> review a lot of stuff, but really, really enjoyed it. One of my favorite albums I've listened to this year. This one is not going to be on that same level. Mm -hmm. I still think it's really good. I think 16 songs was too much. I don't think there's any songs on here I listen to and go, oh, man, it's not great. I would have mm -hmm. done with 10 to 12 songs, mm -hmm. and I think that would have been just right. But it's a period of time in the late decade, 2008 to really 2012, we're doing, we're doing long albums. Everybody's putting yeah. out albums that are over an hour long. And, <laughs> you know, you kind of roll with the flow there. So it all fit together. There wasn't any song you listened to and went, oh, man, I don't think this fits with the theme. Mm -hmm. It did, but for me... Uh, just just too much. I thought the back half of the album wasn't quite as good as the mm -hmm. front half. So for that, I'm still going to be at a high score, but not nearly like uh, Funeral. I'm going to be at an 8.25. No, man. I, uh, I I think you have some ballad criticisms uh, there. I uh, usually do, Trey. <laughs> I uh, I did like this a little bit more than you. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling. Okay, I in, thought you were going to say better than Funeral. Oh no, no, not not quite, not quite at that level. That's a level, high bar, but still pretty darn good, man. I'm feeling an eight seven five on this album. Again, I love the themes. It uh, hit home as somebody kind of in that age, sure. uh, and as somebody who just grew up in the suburbs of Texas all their life too. A lot of stuff I could connect to from uh, from Wynn's lyrics on here. So I I quite enjoyed the whole the whole record. Were there a couple songs that probably could have been chopped put this at 13 yeah i think so but uh in any case i don't think there was a, a stinker on the record no, so to speak all. either so uh not not too much of a criticism from there for me but yeah man 875 let us know y'all what you think of this record down below you like funeral or the suburbs more uh definitely would like to hear the takes on that uh as always dad appreciate all the research oh, man yeah. it's fun man and appreciate you, Mr. Tom W. You, Tom. out here and uh, always bringing us the goods there over from uh, over in Wales. Uh, the, his Don't suggestions. Don't we give out too much uh, about it, man. We got Tom <laughs> W. from Wales. People will start narrowing this down, man. But uh, anyways, y'all, as always, appreciate y'all. And until next time, thanks for watching. Happy listening. And we will see you.